Thank you so much for um, chatting today. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, no, I'm really good, thank you. I've um, sort of settled into this new way of life. It's a new norm, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, into it. Yeah, really busy, I guess, still. Yeah, look, it's been, um, I can't lie to anyone and say that I'm at the, you know, at another meeting when I'm really in a cafe down the road looking <laughs> after myself. <laughs> So, yeah, for the first 10 days, I was really struggling to, to adapt because I was just going back-to-back -back sort of meetings and interviews and stuff. So I was sort of settled into a new routine, the, the, you know, the new norm, I call it. So I've sort of got some sort of resemblance around what needs to happen. But, you know, we're, we're out of stage four and into stage three, but nothing really changes too much for me. So, yeah. you know, a bit more outdoor time and maybe catch up with someone from a little bit of a distance but I think it'll be pretty normal for me for the next couple of weeks, the same as it has been for the last four already. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one of your goals is to change the suicide rates here in New Zealand and you've got a few um, projects um, on the go that is working towards that goal. Um, one of them, the JK Foundation, I was reading that you're working with the University of um, Auckland to develop a curriculum around mental health and well-being. Um, can you... Tell us a bit more about that. That sounds really exciting, especially um, in my role and what I do. Yeah, oh, it's really, really, really important for me that. So, what happened, you know, I've been in the face of mental health for 15 years. Uh, we did depression.org.nz 10 years ago. Um, just recently, I brought out a new product called Mentor Me, but that's another um, discussion. But for me, um, what I felt was, after all this work, I guess there's less stigma, but the suicide rates continue to go up and up and up every year. You know, last five years, I think, you know, don't quote me on the stats, but 604, 616, 623, 668 last year, something like that. So I just woke up one night thinking, we've got to do something differently. And really, I think that um, education is the best way to start with that. So uh, what I did was for a year got a group of headmasters together, child psychiatrists, marketers from commercial companies, just a real eclectic mix of people to talk about this problem. And what we all decided was that, you know, schools don't need any more pressure on them from a resource point of view, either money or human. Um, they don't need their workload added to. Um, but we also need to sort of cry, try and create a curriculum that deals with the IQ of what mental health is so that we'll have better EQ for it. So the idea of the JK Foundation is to build, to build that model but build it thinking a little bit differently and then have um, a situation where it's going to be very painless for the schools to put it into the school system. So, you know... Just saying those things has been a big challenge. We've been at it for a couple of years. Um, and this year we've raised enough money to go to the Auckland University and say, please help us build this um, as a curriculum that we can roll out some trials. Hopefully, well, it was going to be in the, in the fourth term of this year, but we don't know what that will look like now. Okay, and so you've already got some schools that you're trialling it with? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. So we've got a, we've asked a few people, but then obviously COVID's put everything on hold. So, you know, the, the most important thing for us now, while we don't um, know what or when that might happen, is to make sure that we, you know, we really nail off the, the curriculum, what it might look like. Um, the most important thing for us as well is that one uh, size doesn't fit all so what we want to be able to create is you know the coaches that that go into schools and then really um, you know make sure they co-design what suits that school yes. so I think every school is different and if you talk about deciles I don't know if we're still allowed to talk about deciles but you know what a decile one school might need compared to a decile two school or a decile 10 school is going to be very different. So co-designing that, um, keeping in mind we don't want to put any pressure on the resources of the school, which are often uh, under pressure. So, oh, yeah, that's, that's the JK Foundation. That's what we're trying to do. Oh, I look forward to um, that rolling out. Um, so 
you'd agree we live in an amazing country, the scenery, the really friendly people. Why do you think our suicide rates are so high then? Yeah, look, I think, uh, well, the suicide rates are high around the world. I mean, 800,000 people committed suicide last year. So it's a pandemic in its own right. You know, we talk about pandemics a lot. Um, look, I think it's probably a combination of things. I, I do think that um, we do need to grow up more in touch with our emotions and understanding them and, and knowing how to deal with them. So I think a little bit of hangover from that sort of reserve, don't show your feelings type. Um, and then uh, a, a lack of understanding in the modern world. And I think the whole world's going through that. You know, what sort of effect does online bullying have now? What, what you know, what... What is social media doing? I mean, these things aren't going away, but I still think we need um, strategic tools to help. But I don't think that, um, you know, I don't think that it's a, it's a, or I can name one problem. It's a combination, like all things when they get serious, it's a combination of things. Um, in Māori and Pacific Islander especially, some of the stats are high from, you know, from sort of 15 to 21. So we need to understand why that's happening. And if we can understand and give some education around that, so, and we want to start at a young age, we think starting at five um, is important, and, and that's a challenge in its own right. You know, you need to make sure that you've got the right wording, and, and, and so, you know, it's a, it's a big challenge, but I'm excited about it. Um, so another thing that I was looking into is your new, well, your app that you released, was it in 2018 or 2018? Uh, yeah, no, we just released it five weeks ago, Oh, actually. five weeks yeah. ago. Oh, yeah. okay. So yeah. um, let me get the pronunciation. Mente Mia? Yeah, Mente Mia means Ita Italian for my mind. So Mente Mia, yeah. So, yeah, you got that. Oh, no, got that now. Well done. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so look, what Mento Mio really is, it's about everybody every day. So what we felt um, was that, you know, stress and anxiety was the new norm. So what we did is, well, I went out and interviewed over 3,000 people with five foundation members. And what we did is we built um, really Mento Mia to deliver tips and techniques uh, to help people with everyday mental health. So, you know, when I was really struggling, just surviving, to how I feel now, which is thriving, really was that mental health journey of understanding the tips and techniques that you need every single day to look after your mental health. You know, I think we talk a lot about, you know, physical health and physical fitness and diet and all that sort of stuff, but mental health is as important. So what we felt we wanted to do was do JK Foundation. And then the second thing is, where's the you know rest of our population? And that's in the workplace. So we created a enterprise version where we don't want the end user to pay so corporates will pay to deliver that to their workers and we believe they'll get back happier workplace you know better mental health better wellness better well-being um, and how i wanted to deliver it was you know a lot of this information is out there but it's as boring as that shit, right yeah. so we need to be able to deliver it in a really engaging way where you ever you are at in your mental health journey um, so for us that was trucking along really, really well. And then four weeks ago, COVID came along. And, and uh, as a business, we decided that we'd like to gift it uh, to the whole of the country for free. So that's on the app stores now. You can download it. And, and really, um, you know, the end goal is that you have a personalized mental well-being coach in your pocket. I must admit, um, each week I send out like a well-being challenge to um, – our staff and so last Monday I sent them out and said hey check out this app and there were a number of teachers who emailed back and said oh have you read JK's book um, All Blacks Don't Cry and then teachers were emailing back telling me what their personality trait was and, and, and yeah, so they're really loving it and so um, yeah it was, it was cool to hear so I had so many teachers just flip back emails straight away which was yeah it was lovely. So I've got it on my phone too, and it's nice to get your reminders. Um, like yesterday, reminder was about making sure you get outside during this time. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, it's important. It's important that it is engaging, that it feels like yours, that it's not too strenuous, that it's not too annoying. Yeah. You know, so some of the great feedback that we've had is that you know people are enjoying it. It's making them feel better. They're trying some of the tools they're working. 
and you know we're we're working on it all the time so there'll be you know it'll keep improving so you know we we got it out to the market because of the because of the issues that we've got and we're just going to keep improving it and you know i think it's the future i think looking after your mental well-being is is really really important and surviving and what is a continuing you know busy uh, stressful world and and those things aren't going to change we've just got to make sure that we've got the tools so that we can thrive rather than just survive yeah absolutely um so you talk about wellness being something that we all need to do for ourselves every single day what have you done for yourself today oh uh, just when you rang i was just cooking actually um, so I was just doing a pesto, a fresh pesto paste. So I picked the basil out of the garden and just making it um, in the in the the tradition of my region, Treviso. So no pine nuts, just garlic, salt, and fresh basil. Um, and tonight I'm having a snapper and scallops. So I was just uh, just um, heating heating the butter yeah. and putting. Carpeties, uh, capers in the butter, and a bit of thyme, and let that soak for a few hours, and then we're going to cook the snapper. So that that's my um, chill time. And when I've prepared dinner, I'm going to go upstairs, and I've taken up the guitar uh, while in while in um, lockdown. It sounds like I'm strangling a cat upstairs, <laughs> but it's very good for my mental health. Yeah. Um, and this morning, you know, I, I I had a half an hour workout, and then. Um, a beautiful hot shower, which is one of my pleasures in life. Sat down and had a coffee without my phone, um, and then started work. So I've done about five things. Yeah. Um, and intermittent through that, I've been just I, I, I naturally do my breathing exercises five or six times a day as a habit. So as well as that. Cool. Um, so what's the best? Piece, just a few random questions here and there. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Could be any advice. Uh, my dad was an amazing uh, man, really, and I probably have to tell you a story to put this in context, but he said to me, um, don't touch death to learn how to live like I did, um, which was pretty heavy at the time, but it really changed my life, and now I live every day um, as if I was going to pass away tomorrow. I don't want to. Obviously, I want to live as long as I can, but it really... Um, makes you focus on getting everything you need to get done today, meaning emotionally as well. So I don't leave any arguments unsettled. I I don't go without telling people I care about them. Um, And I make sure I look after myself on a daily basis. So that was probably uh, the best bit of advice I've ever had. Um, And what advice would you give to your younger self? My younger self? Um... Don't worry too much about what other people think about you. You need to love yourself first, and then everything else will fall into place. Um, And lastly, so on your app, you have the Spin the Wheel of Kindness. Um, Have you spun it today? Yeah, I rang it. uh, I've I've spun it, and it was um, Ring a Friend. Ah. So, yeah, I rang a a mate of mine um, this morning, actually, first thing in Italy. And it was quite sad. He's an old friend of mine who used to give me free fruit. He used to, if you can imagine, an old Italian village with the fruit guy there. He was a rugby guy and he used to give us free fruit. And I rang him and he was crying. He just lost his, a very good friend of his. He's getting really old. Um, but um, I managed to cheer him up a wee bit and that cheered me up. So, yeah, that made me feel better that I rang because I'm pleased that I did. Well, thank you, Sir John. Um, it's been great to talk to you. Um, and, yeah, I look forward to all of your projects, but especially the um, one for the New Zealand curriculum around mental health and well-being. Um, I definitely see that as a need. Um, every day we're seeing more and more children come in through school and they're anxious, even at five. Yep. So, um, yeah, a huge need. Yeah, well, I'll be... We'll be in touch because you'll be able to give me some solid feedback and it'll, um, you know, it's something that I'm really passionate about. So we want to have the best mental health in the developed world and if we all work together, we'll get there. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.